and two. Test one, two. Here we go. Test, test. Test one, two. Please come to order.
Please come in and sit down. Please come in and sit down. Please take your seats. <laughs> Joining us this evening on the piano. Mr. Charles Gallagher, who's going to play for us. Please rise. Thank you, Mr. Gallagher. I have one or two announcements this evening. The Allen Community Development Board is going to be holding an ad hoc meeting, a meeting in the front foyer at the break at 9.30. So if anyone's interested, it's part of the, public, the new public open meeting law. We're going to announce these meetings as they're going to happen during town meeting. Um, the high school girls softball team is out selling us cookies and drinks and things again tonight. So please help them. And the other thing, the um, veterans are selling these nice shirts regarding the moving wall to help support that effort that was here a weekend ago, two weekends ago. So go out there during the, any time during the break before or after the meeting and help support them. Thank you. Are there any new town meeting members who have yet to be sworn in? Anyone who was just elected who hasn't gotten sworn in yet? If they so, please rise. Now you're a repeat. All right, anybody who was just elected this year, please rise. We'll do them all at once. Now, you did it the other night. So everyone here has been sworn in, good. Oh, where? Oh, okay. Did you just get elected? Yeah, you gotta do it. Okay, I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially perform the duties incumbent upon me as a town meeting member of the town of Arlington in accordance with the bylaws, town manager act, and the general laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, so help me God. Congratulations. No speech. Um, that's it for my announcements. That's swearing in. Chairman of the Board of Row. Good evening. It is moved that if all the business of the meeting is set forth in the warrant for the annual town meeting is not disposed of at this session, when the meeting adjourns, it adjourns to Monday, May 2nd, 2011 at 8, 8 p.m. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. All opposed? No. So moved. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I want to start the meeting tonight by recognizing the service, long service, of three wonderful 
um, public servants for the town of Arlington. They include Corrine Rainville, our former clerk, Joe Curran of the school committee, and Jack Hurd of the Board of Selectmen. Thank you. Are there any announcements or resolutions? Sir. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Roland Chabot, Precinct 12. Uh, just a quick announcement. The Friends of Robbins Farm Park are holding their annual cleanup day this coming Saturday from 9 to 1. We'd love to have you there. Uh, it's across the street from the Bracket School, if you're not sure exactly where the, where the park is, and we meet there right by those picnic tables. Of special note this year, we're going to be planting three new trees courtesy of Trees Please. It's a great program. We had an opportunity to pick up some, and so that's going to keep us busy for a couple of hours that morning. Looking forward to seeing you if you can make it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Ms. Howard, did you have an announcement? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jane Howard from Precinct 10, also co-chair of the Vision 2020 Standing Committee. I have a similar announcement to Mr. Uh, Chapitz, but in a different location. Uh, the Spy Pond Committee of Vision 2020 will uh, host two events next week, and the, the announcements in the, are on the back table. The first is something called Spy Pond Stories, Fish, Fables, and Tall Tales, and that will be Tuesday evening in the Selectman's Hearing Room at 7 o'clock. And we'll have some notable and new people to reveal many things about Spy Pond you might not have heard about before, and to teach you how to use a Secchi disc. And the second is that next Saturday, the 7th, will be the 7th annual Spy Pond Trails Day, and we welcome all of you to come down with your rakes and shovels and litter bags and join us to keep that trail that abuts the uh, Route 2 access road to Pleasant Street. Uh, open and to take care of all the trails that we've already put in over the past few uh, seven years. The third is not on this sheet and th it is that on this Saturday we will be planting and, and uh, also adding soils to two areas at the reservoir. Money has been given for a habitat wildlife garden there and it will be installed hopefully by the end of Saturday. We spent several hours uh, pushing soil around today and there's more soil pushing around to do. And it's on either side of the new spillway. And that is also from nine to one. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. O'Connor. Jim O'Connor, Precinct 19. I want to thank you for your support of my candidacy for the uh, assistant moderator, and in brevity, all I can say is if anyone needs any help in how to conduct business at town meeting or has questions about different votes, I'll be glad to help. Thank you. Mr. Jameson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Gordon Jameson, Precinct 12 and co-chair of the Arlington Recycling Committee. We once again uh, this year have, for your amusement, uh, some party favors. Um, we have our single stream recycling uh, stickers which you can put on any barrel and make that into a recycling uh, large bin for single stream recycling. If you already have one, give one to your neighbors. Um, in the back of the hall, but while not on your seats, are also some yard trimmings. It is uh, spring and many of you will be cleaning up your yards both here and at home. These are available for those in the room in the back and also for those at home at the DPW office. Um, Ms. Yanetti, uh, Recycling Coordinator and Office Manager of the DPW, would do a much better job on this next one. But we have here your Uncle Sam multi-purpose shopping recycling bag. You can take it to the store. I saw someone at Trader Joe's shopping with us the other day. You can take it into the house. You can unload your groceries. You can then fill it up with the recyclables and take it to your bin. It even comes with a handy emptying strap. 
Um, so, so each of you got one of those, and if you don't already have one or don't need another one, again, give one to your neighbors. And last but not least, not to spend too much time tonight, um, uh, on May 7th, we'll be having our, our, our nth annual Community Collection Day. We now have these both in the spring and the fall, and I believe David has some. Yes, thank you. This will be at the, uh, the DPW yard on Grove Street from 9 to 1, and we really request you to those here in the hall and at home to come at 9 and don't come after 1 because we're setting up before 9 and we're done at 1. You can bring a whole host of things that you normally can't recycle or dispose of um, at the curbside recycling or through your trash to the event. Next slide, please. First and foremost, you can bring your CRTs or uh, televisions. Uh, if you pay the DPW to pick it up on the curbside, you pay 15. If you bring it to the event on the 7th, you pay 10 per unit. Um, you can also bring off that, bring that old propane tank that no longer conforms to standards for free and dispose of that. Next slide, please. You have those documents. You just did your taxes. Many of us did. Um, I always postpone to September personally, but uh, um, you have those old documents. I have my father's. I'm going to shred them for him. You can bring two boxes, basically those paper boxes per residence, two, and they'll be confidentially shredded securely. Um, by the, these guys that have volunteered that have a tie with Arlington for years. After that, it's five bucks a box. For businesses, you pay from the first box. There's a uh, paper bin that you can recycle newspapers and general papers, but not cardboard uh, in the yard there as well. And those go to the, the proceeds of that go to the Arlington Schools Foundation. Again, again no cardboard. You, that can be picked up in your normal single stream curbside recycling. Next slide, please. Uh, this is one of the ones that I really think is one of the most marvelous things that happens is you can bring a in good condition used bike and give it to Bikes Not Bombs. They ask for a $10 donation to ship it overseas. This becomes a family's sole transportation. It's a really wonderful thing. The Board of Health, Ms. Connolly and her team will be collecting syringes and used prescriptions. A big hit with the seniors. Next slide, please. You have some old children or adult clothing, working toys, working toys, uh, and sneakers. You can bring those, and the little fox, and the big brothers and big sisters will benefit from those. If you have old books, basically any type of book, DVDs or CDDs, CDs, no VHH tapes, tapes, sorry. Again, no VHS tapes. Those go in the regular trash, sorry. Um, bring those, and the Stratton PTO will make big bucks that day and Little Fox will benefit as well. Next, cycle. Next slide, please. A big hit instituted by Dan Warren, a uh, member of the DPW, is metal recycling. Pipes, poles, shelves, cabinets, metal, metals, but no appliances, that requires a sticker, can be brought and disposed of on the 7th at the DW yard between 9 and 1. And a brand new one, folks. Hold, your, hold on to your hats, e-waste. This means basically, there, and there's a list on the back of the handout that you have on your seat. If it has a plug, a cord, it goes. This is going to take a huge amount of stuff out of our normal waste stream, and we encourage you to come and utilize that. It will be both in the fall and in the spring, but no, again, no large appliances. That requires a sticker. Next slide, please. The Arlington High School Save Club each year is with the uh, mentoring of Nigel Krauss, who drives the returnables to and from the, uh, to the recycling center, will be collecting re returnable bottles and cans. Please bring those to them so they can support worldwide um, sustainable and re um, events. Um, this is the last slide, okay. And batteries. Batteries was new last um, fall. Car batteries, computer batteries, camera batteries, and rechargeable batteries can all be brought and dumped off, and those will be recycled. A note, alkaline batteries, current alkaline batteries can go in the regular trash. The toxins that used to be in those are no longer in them. And you can pick up stuff on how to recycle. And last slide, please. Remember, Arlington needs you to recycle. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can we get one of those handouts up here? Announcements or resolutions? Front row question for the rest of the light bulbs. Wanamakers. Okay. Any other announcements or resolutions? 
Uh, it's also time for the uh, precinct committees to form. Precincts one through seven are supposed to form today. If they haven't already met, um, please do so at the break. Precinct one in the corridor outside the clerk's office. Precinct two on the other side of the court in the clerk's office. Precinct three and over by the parking lot. Precinct four over by the parking lot. Precinct five by the town gardens. Number six in the lobby outside the auditorium. I guess that's out front. And number seven is also out in the corridor by the garden. So if you could organize, get that piece of paper signed and hand it back to um, Ms. Lucarelli, that'd be appreciated. Um, Article three, any other reports? Any reports to be submitted? Mr. Tosti. I move that Article three be taken from the table. All in favor? Uh, I move that the uh, report of the Town Government Reorganization Committee be received. Second. All in favor? Aye. Report is so received. Uh, just very briefly, this is on the uh, table on the back, and you know how you go through these reports and you study them carefully and you try to get every error, and then I, I realize that the title of it is really not right title, the town meeting created the reorganization committee, but the correct title, of course, is the town government reorganization committee. Now, I'm not going to make any uh, report at this time. I would ask that you read it. What we've, what we've done is uh, show the uh, Warren article, uh, show the comment of the town government reorganization committee, and then the proposed motion. Now, the motions that will be before you will be those of the Board of Selectmen. Um, on that, but we wanted to uh, put, there's only one article where we disagree on, and I'll put a substitute motion in at that point. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you see the uh, individuals who have spent a great deal of work on this uh, on the second paragraph. Please feel free to ask them any questions or myself, and uh, look forward to talking about this when we get to these articles. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other reports or committees? Seeing none, Mr. Tosti. I move that Article Three be laid upon the table. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? So moved. That brings us to Article Eighteen. Yes. Good evening. Um, article Eighteen is what we think of as a housekeeping article. One of the things that's happened in our lives is we have dumpsters and now we have pods. And uh, this um, Warren article is talking about putting the portable storage container after the word dumpster in an existing bylaw. It is because of, as everybody knows, these, um, these pods that people use as they're moving oftentimes stay for a long period of time either in people's driveways or unfortunately often in existing streets and roads and they've become um, more of a nuisance. So this is really a, an article that was brought to us by the town manager and the police chief. We have um, a number of recent incidences where the pods have been found to actually disrupt traffic. So that's the point of the article. Um, and in, unless anybody has any other questions. Nope. Oh, Mr. Well, there are a few people on the list. Okay. Uh, Mr. Loretti. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Chris Loretti, Precinct 7. Um, I would agree this is largely a housekeeping article, and I would ask town meeting to support it. I do have a question pertaining to the scope, though. The warrant article speaks specifically about um, establishing a permit system and I think fees for portable storage devices. However, the way that the article has been amended, and I think this should be clear if people look at the strike through text, is that it changes the fee for dumpsters, the permit fee for dumpsters, from a fixed figure of $24, which presumably was set by town meeting at some time, to some amount set by the Board of Selectmen. And I think that's something that people who 
take um, or use dumpsters a lot like contractors and therefore have to pay the fee uh, might be concerned about. And I wonder, given the way that the warrant article itself is written, which doesn't say anything about amending the bylaw as it pertains to dumpster fees, whether that changes within the scope. <clears throat> Mr. Loretti, fortunately brought this to my attention earlier in the day, so I had a chance to look at it. And I do agree that that portion of the recommended vote, D, by deleting $24 from the second sentence and replacing it with the words set by the Board of Selectmen is beyond the scope of the original warrant article. Thank you, Mr. So we'll amend it to delete that. Ms. Rowe. Um, yes, we have a substitute motion to do exactly what you've said. I believe it's going to be on the screen. Um, so I don't need to read it for the town meeting unless they would like me to. Read it. Wait, 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 wait. You can't read it. Everybody can't talk at once because I can't hear more than one person. Sir. Okay, that's fine. I don't mind reading yeah. it. I was hoping it was readable. Um, I, Clarissa Rowe, Chair of the Board of Selectmen and Town Meeting Member from Precinct 6, hereby move that the proposed vote under Warrant on Article 18 presented to Town Meeting and the report of the Board of Selectmen be amended as indicated below. Deletion struck, struck insertions underlined. Voted that Title 5, Article 9, Placement of Dumpsters of the Bylaws be and hereby is amended by A, adding the words and in quotes, or portable storage container, which is what a pod is, after the words, no dumpster, in the first sentence, B, and then we will delete the following, deleting $24 from the second sentence and replacing it with the words set by the Board of Selectmen. So we're deleting that, that entire phrase. Um, adding the words and portable storage containers after the word dumpsters in the third sentence and D becomes C, inserting the following sentence between the fourth and fifth sentences. Portable storage container is, in, is any outdoor container temporarily placed at or in front of a private residence or business for the packing and or storage of items of personal property, goods or materials, and E becomes D, inserting in the fifth sentence after the word dumpster, the words or portable storage container such that the proposed vote will now appear as um, voted that Article 5, Title 5, Article 6, placement of dumpsters, dumpsters of the bylaws be and hereby as amended by, and I'll read it again, adding the words and uh, or portable storage container after the words no dumpster in the first sentence. B, adding the words and portable dumpster portable storage, storage container after the word dumpster in the third sentence. C, inserting the following sentence between the fourth and fifth sentences. That sentence, sentence is, portable storage container is an outdoor container temporarily placed at or in front of a private residence or business for the packing and or storage items of personal property, goods or materials. And D, inserting the fifth, in the fifth sentence after the word dumpster, the word or portable storage container. So, is that clear? Wait, hopefully. Yeah. So you're getting rid of B. Yeah. We're getting rid of C. B. Let me just let me yeah. ask. Everything after the in the sec third sentence after the semicolon. Parenthesis B, all the way to the end of parenthesis C, right. changing D to C, and C to D. Yes. Okay. Ah. Is, is everyone clear what she wants to do? <laughs> if you look at her recommended vote, the selectman's recommended vote, which you've had before you, in the third line down, after the words, the first sentence, they're striking out everything from there through the end of this fourth line down to the letters parentheses C and parentheses. Down in the last line, they change in parentheses D to parentheses C. And in the very one from the bottom line, to change in E to D. Basically what we're doing is, 
is taking uh, out the wait one the, second, Mr. Hainer. We're Mr. taking out the reference to, to the dollar. Yeah, they're taking out the reference to the dollar values and re numerating the other sentences. Mr. Hainer. Bill Hainer, Precinct 2. I thought we were supposed to have amendments on our chair. Uh, no, well, just for this reason. Yeah, this is why we were supposed to have them on our chair. And this isn't supposed to supplement the chair placements. This is borders on the line of simple. It, it, it's a little bit. I can see it because they gave it to me. You guys can't see it. Um, if you want, we can postpone it till Monday. Or we can vote on it now if you wish. Wait, is, I'll put you on the list, Ms. Fury. Um, now, Mr. There's other people in front of you. Mr. Hainer um, made a, a point of information right. which doesn't really exist. So. I mean, I, I think that Mr. Hainer's right. We unfortunately didn't see the um, yeah. the, the question about the money until this afternoon. So we were trying to get this in in your hands. It actually is quite simple. I probably made it sound more complicated than it is. Yeah, you kind of did, but let's. I hadn't, I'm afraid I hadn't read it before. <laughs> yeah, it, it's actually pretty straightforward. We're just getting rid of the whole section B and renumbering the other ones. Um, we'll take up whether we want to substitute it or not. Mr. Um, Trembley was next on the list. Ed Trembley, Precinct 19. Um, so if, if, I'm, if, if this passes, if I'm understanding right, the, uh, the fee for this would be $24? Well, what's, what's the fee going to be for this? Mr. Sullivan, can you answer him the question Pro on fees? Probably was unfortunate the fee was mentioned at all because under the state statute, the selectmen get to set the fee. So um, it will be whatever in, the selectmen set the fee at. In the current bylaws, is there a fee, Ms. Rice? So do the selectmen have any idea how, what, they're, Wait what a they second. want to make the fee? Wait, Ed, I'm finding out if we currently have a fee. Matt's going to answer your question better. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Juliana Rice, Town Council. The current bylaw does not refer to portable um, on-site storage units at all, so there is no fee for them. The only fee in the current bylaw is $24 for dumpsters. Okay. But that, that still doesn't say what we think we might charge for a fee for this? Well, it looks like they don't get to charge a fee. Oh, well, we will be charging a fee. Um, if you'd like to know what the fee is, we'll have to have an emergency meeting to discuss it, because the, the Board of Selectmen hasn't, we haven't discussed the fee. We said all fees in the town, but we haven't discussed it. So this is kind of open-ended, you know, you could whack somebody for 500 bucks if you wanted to. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think you will, but, no. but you know, I'm not, comfortable well, with the idea of voting on stuff that, that's, that's yeah. kind of... All right, if you'd like us to, then we'll have an emergency meeting and report well, next I mean, week. I don't want to tie up the well, town well, meeting. Wait a second. Wait, wait. You guys are bantering. We're not supposed to have that. Oh, Ms. sorry. Ms. Rowe, if you could wait to... Um, I asked if you have a question from now on. Um, fees by state law have to be reasonable and in line with the services provided, so they couldn't be hitting you for $400. Oh, if okay. they're going for 24 bucks for a dumpster, I'd imagine it'd be somewhere in line that, but I don't want to speak for the Board of Selectmen. In, in general, I'm opposed to things like this because we, you know, we, we ask for the we ask a lot out of town residents, and when somebody wants to get one of these pods, and I can't say that this is a serious problem because when I ride around town, I don't see a ton of them all over the place. Um, you know, okay, so the, the police chief seems to think that there's a uh, uh, an issue with them out in the street. So, you know, maybe there's a, a, a thing there, but this seems to me, if, Mr., if the moderator can correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but this seems to regulate them on somebody's private property too. And people only get these pods if they're moving, which means it's not gonna be there very long, or if they're um, using it for storage because they're renovating a house. Either way, the town is gonna get some money out of that. If they're renovating their house, they get fees out of the uh, building permits. If they're moving, uh, they're leaving and you know it's it's not a nice thing to whack them on the way out the door but if they're moving in 
Um, we're going to be getting fees out of them for everything that goes and goes along with uh, house transactions and and everything else. And um, I, I just don't, especially if uh, if the uh, town wants to pass an override. I don't think we should me be needling the residents yet again for another fee and permit for something that isn't really a problem. I mean, I don't see a lot of them around. Thank you. Mr. Fisher. Uh, Andrew Fisher, Precinct 6. Um, how do these changes address the problem of um, a pod, for example, that's obstructing traffic? And how do these changes, uh, do these changes pose, pose a time limitation? I don't, I don't see the time limitation. Can you answer that question? And, and I thought that was the reason for the change. It is actually the reason for the change. Um, our parking um, officer, Corey Reto, has had to come out on numerous occasions in the last year to deal with pods being put in, in, in streets and in ways that have been obstructing traffic. And that's, that's why this warrant article was brought to our attention in the first place. But, but how does the warrant article... Um because it, it ha oh, 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 he has to approve the location. Right, right. We, we okay. also, I mean, it, he has to, if it's in a public way or a um, private way, he has to come back and talk to the board administrator about how long that um, pod can be in the, the public way. We haven't had any kind of jurisdiction over these pods in the past. And that's, we thought that we would put it into the dumpster bylaw since it's, the simil a similar um, item. Are you intending to just use judgment or something about whether it can be there for three weeks or three months? Or? Well, what's happening is that there, you know, most people, it started out as a, um, a couple of day use. It's now, um, it's sometimes extended for three or four um, weeks. So it is, it's not as, you know, as, as people have gotten used to it, it's because there's been more um, misuse of the of the pods. Um, we do ask for an insurance certificate for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which um, they have to supply to us because Even obviously because it's their their personal goods have migrated into a pod instead of being inside of a house. That's that's an insurance binder. It's a common household um, requirement. Uh, I don't want to bicker about that. It just seems odd to me that. That that's the town's business if somebody well, I think whatever rules I mean, applied to dumpsters are now going to apply to pods right. if you had to comply with pod dumpster rules you now have to apply those to a pod I've never I've had a lot of dumpsters I've never had any such rules uh, unless it was on the street when the dumpsters on private land um, I'm, I'm sorry I did but Ms. anyway Ms. my my Ms. main questions were is there going to be a time limit? Um, if somebody's building an addition, take, sometimes an addition will take three to six months. Um, I would hope you would use leeway. And uh, the other thing is, I, this talks about personal belongings. Um, there are dumpsters on Swan Place uh, right on the sidewalk. I take it that this does not pertain to those. One belongs to the auto body shop and the other is the pizza shop. Does this only apply to public property, the streets? It doesn't apply to someone's private property. If I have it on my front lawn, it's okay, right? I'm getting nods from up front. Ms. Rice? Will this apply to pods or dumpsters that are on people's private property or only on the streets and sidewalks? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Juliana Rice, Town Council. Uh, currently, I believe that the dumpster permit program is applied only on uh, when dumpsters are placed in public or private ways, uh, ways to which the public has access, and that is the intent of this bylaw as well with regard to pods. So you can put it on your front lawn, Andy. Okay, well, okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Fiore? Oh, are you done? A, I would take a leap of faith and vote yes for on this. Thank you. Mrs. Fiore? Oh, wait for the mic. 
The, the tape can't get it. Here it comes. Hey, turn that phone off, man. Yeah, I talked to you the other day. Thank you. Elsie Fiori, Precinct 2. Oh, more reaching. This is very minor. It's just that the chairman uh, said Article 6, and I just want to make sure it's Article 9. Title 5, Article 9. Yeah, that's what's in the vote. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Smith? Dick Smith, Precinct 17. Unless I'm missing something completely, the changes up here should not have been made. There is no A, B, C, D, and E in the text of, the, of Article 9. By, t by deleting B, you're in effect saying that you're not taking out the $24. As originally written, as far as I can see, this was completely correct. All of these changes, none of those should have been made. No, the, the point of Mr. Loretti was that was beyond the scope of the original warrant article. The uh, warrant article didn't speak to um, money issues at all. It only spoke to portable storage containers. It didn't talk about money. Well, the effect of this is the $24 stays in section Article 9. Because you haven't th taken any action to delete the $24. You've, you've lined out this, that B step, which would take out the $24. So the $24 still will be in, the, in Article 9 if you take the action as it's written. Correct. $24 stays in the bylaw. We're not getting rid of $24. We're leaving it in. We're not letting this article accomplish that. Okay. If you want both, yeah, it'll cost you $48. You, wait, wait. You, you can't yell from your seat, Ms. Phelps. You're on the list. But to, to answer your question, a permit is going to cost $24 by what's in the bylaw. My interpretation of that, I could be wrong. I'm not interpreting the bylaws. That's Ms. Rice's job. All right, Mr. Sullivan? You were next on the list. You passed. Mr. Cacavaro? Thomas Cacavaro, Precinct 11. I'm really confused. And I get confused easily. Mm -hmm. um, so is the fee, when I'm hearing the last 30 seconds, is $24 for an open container? Is that correct? Or is it still needs to be set by the, the As the bylaw like currently it? reads, Article 9, placement of dumpsters, no dumpsters shall be utilized in the town, etc. The fee for each permit shall be $24. That's what the bylaw currently reads. Okay. Their recommended vote was going to delete that and give them the power to change it. Correct. That wasn't in the warrant article, so we're striking that authority out. Okay. That's what's being proposed. Okay. The problem that I have with this, once again, it's an article that has a question mark to it. And the question mark is, what is the fee? $24 to somebody could be ridiculous and could not be. If we're going to do this, we need to put a fee on it. I don't know. I'm sure you're not going to charge $400, but, but you might charge something that's not reasonable to the people already. In the in fee is set at $24 by the bylaw. We're not but changing the board, that. Okay, but can the board of selectmen change it? No, they've got to come back to the town meeting and change the bylaw. Okay, so the fee is $24. Yeah. So why did selectmen Monroe get up and say that they, they, were going to, they could have an ex an emergency meeting and do the fee. That's what I don't understand. I don't get it either, so yeah. can maybe someone Wait could... Wait a second, I've got to get this guy. Uh, yes, Miss... No, you've got to get a mic, Miss Phelps. And there's no such thing as a point of information. We're getting off the rules of town meeting time. Miss, we, we, we... 
so so the so what I'm hearing is the town manager just told us that selectmen by state law set the fee. The fees in the bylaw. But he just told us the selectmen have the right to do that. So it, it, excuse me for a minute. So I guess I need to know by the town attorney is the fee twenty four dollars by our bylaw and cannot be changed unless it comes to town meeting, or is it true what selectmen said that they can they're gonna make the fee? That's the question. Ms. Rice, can you answer his question better than I tried? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Juliana Rice, Town Council. M many of these bylaws that contain particular fees or charges were passed before this town meeting adopted a state law called Chapter 40, Section 22F. That state law allows any department or town instrumentality to charge a reasonable fee for a service it provides, as long as that fee is used to offset the cost of delivering that service. If the bylaw is amended, or if it's not amended, as proposed under this article, the fee uh, for a dumpster or a dumpster and a pod, if it is amended, will be $24 in the bylaw. If the Board of Selectmen, as the entity charged with implementing the bylaw, uh, determines that that fee is not sufficient to offset the costs of service necessary um, to be expended in connection with the permit program, it can adopt a new schedule of fees in accordance with the state law as adopted by this town meeting without a change to the bylaw. So I stand corrected. Okay, what thank she you. Said. So it can be changed. Now we know that. Okay. I think it's important in any article or any decision that anybody makes that you complete the article. We need to know how much it's it going to be. I think that's simple, and, and I think the, the residents need to know that. So I suggest I cannot vote for this. Not that I'm saying that storage containers shouldn't have a fee, but I need to know the fee. I need to understand the whole article. I need to know the fee. I'm voting against this until we do have a fee. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Phelps, now it's your turn. Okay, from now on, please wait your turn. Mr. O'Connor. If memory serves me right, Jim O'Connor, Precinct 19. If memory serves me right, we've discussed issues about dogs, chickens, and lots of different things. But one of the things been clear that this town meeting has done is said that any amendments should be before us at least 48 hours ahead of time. That these issues of clarification about fees or no fees or whether fees can be changed should be clear so we vote representing the people that elected us. And I really think we should postpone this article until further clarification from the Board of Selectmen is clear. Thank you. Make, are you making a motion to I do so? We postpone this article until next Wednesday, at which time the Board of Selectmen would give us their final details of their emergency meeting, which can be held any time in between, as long as it's by Monday night. So we have 48 hours to deliberate over it. Thank you. We have a motion to postpone to time certain next Wednesday, which I believe is May 4th. All, all in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. My opinion is postponed. That brings us to Article 19. Hmm. Increased fines for off feed dog leashes. Four fees. Mr. Chappett. No, oh, you're on the list. Go ahead, Ms. Um, Rowe. Um, Article 19 is a uh, 10 taxpayer article that was brought to the Board of Selectmen about raising the fees for um, any misbehavior of dogs. Um, we agreed with the proponent and thought it was a good idea to um, raise the fees, especially the fee that is um, the first offense was just a warning instead of a fee. You have the fee amounts in front of you and I believe the proponent um, is here and wants to speak? Yes, ma'am. I see you in the back. When I point at you, it means I got you. I don't know who the proponent is. Someone has to introduce her. Is there someone from her? Uh, Mr. Dice, would you Mr. come Dice? up and introduce her?
John Dice, Precinct 13. A request for permission of the meeting uh, for uh, Ms. Christina Chalopatis to uh, address the meeting. She is a resident of the town and resides in Precinct 13. It's a resident of the town. She has the right to address the meeting. Uh, good evening. I'm the proponent of Article 19, Christina Chalapatis of Overlook Road. Article 19 seeks a vote from the town to amend the current bylaw, Article 2, Section 2, Paragraph C, to increase the fines for violating the bylaw, Article 2, Section 2, Leashing of Dogs. My proposal to increase the fines would be as follows. The first offense would be uh, by a fine of $75. The second offense would be by a fine of $100. The third offense would be by a fine of $150. And the fourth in each subsequent offense would be by a fine of $200. The current schedule does not provide for a fine for the first offense. Um, my personal guidance for this was another town bylaw which deals with fines for improper uh, disposal of dog waste. Um, and I followed the guidelines in that bylaw in coming up with this schedule. Um, I'm proposing the amendment to serve as an educational tool to create an awareness of the importance of the current leash law that what it plays in the safety of both residents and pets. The amendment also gives town safety officers additional tools to enforce the current leash bylaw. You may already have been briefed as to my personal family experience where my mother was knocked down in the heights by an unleashed dog and broke her arm. The offense was the first for this dog owner who received only a verbal warning for this offense. However, my family experienced considerable upheaval from this experience as my mother is the caregiver for my father. She sustained a serious injury, which she is still working really hard to overcome. I urge your support for this article to help strengthen the current leash laws in order to communicate the leash law's importance to our community safety for both residents and pets. Thank you. Mr. Ruderman. Mr. Moderator, Madam Clerk, uh, Michael Ruderman, Precinct 9. I offer the following substitute motion on Article 19, which you have on, I think, 90% of your chairs. I apologize. I, I ran out in that direction. We are a very well-attended meeting tonight. But Mr. Good has done me the favor also of putting the, the, the text uh, into his queue of slides, and if he can bring it up loud, uh, uh, large enough, uh, if you don't have uh, the buff colored substitute motion, which I, I move now and I ask for a second. Thank you. Um, not, not to read the text to you, uh, but to summarize very briefly, there's a statute on this. Uh, Mass General Laws, Chapter 140, Section 173A. It tells towns what they can charge in fines for unleashed dogs. The schedule that the substitute motion proposes, that the proposed schedule of fines, is the schedule that's in that law. The law does have, as I quoted on the back side of the substitute motion, um, the option for towns to come up with a different procedure or a different schedule. But the last line, in my reading, not a lawyer, but just reading the text in front of me, I think controls. No new schedule of fines shall contain a fine in excess of $50. That's what I read. That's what I'm putting before you. I'm offering you the substitute amendment where the fines that are suggested in the statute are the fines the town shall impose, being a warning for a first offense, being $25 for a second, $30 for a third, $50 for a fourth, and each subsequent offense. The current schedule of, of fines for unleashed dogs that we have at present is well in excess of these. So I offer you the substitute motion as a means of correcting the error that is in our, our schedule of fines, and we can do something um, uh, you know, to the good on this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ruderman. Uh, Mr. Fisher? Uh, 
Um, uh, Andrew Fisher, Precinct 6. I would object to this because it requires that all areas of town be treated the same. And uh, the animal control officer told me that he just has no problems um, other than two parks at the top of the hill. And it would be a shame to have to treat the entire town, all situations the same, and remove any latitude from him. Um, so I, I would oppose. Uh, I'm speaking against. <coughs> I'm speaking against the high fines, and I'm, I'm speaking against requiring him to issue a fine in the first offense. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Cacavaro. I rise in support of this article. I do have a personal story to tell my mother, who is 86 years old, who walks every day down Edge Hill Road to Mass Ave to go to the center. One of the, the people had opened the door and let out their 50-pound dog, and he, she usually lets him go to the front where there's a bush where he does this little thing. Well, the dog got a little excited, and charged at my mother and knocked her over. Thank God my mother didn't get hurt. So I think this article is very important. I do disagree with Mr. Fisher. All areas in the town, in this town, should be treated the same. What's good for your area is good for my area. We should never treat areas in this town differently. We're all the same. When we start doing that, we start dividing up the town. And there's enough of that now. So I do support this article. I don't know about the fines, and I'm not going to get into that again. But the article is long overdue. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Jamison. Gordon Jamison, Precinct 12. Um, I'm actually speaking on something that I didn't anticipate on. So uh, I have a question for the town council, if possible, uh, Mr. Moderator. Yes. Um, whether or not we pass uh, this, and even with the existing bylaw, does state statute take precedent? Ms. Rice. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Juliana Rice, Town Council. Uh, state statute does dictate what uh, towns may do. However, there is an an another applicable statute here. It's Chapter 40, Section 21, which provides a broad bylaw and reg re um, regulatory authority to towns and um, allows towns uh, to make uh, all manner of bylaws for preserving peace and good order and specifically allows um, penalties for violation of those bylaws to go up to $300. I'll point out that the current bylaw, um, which um, the claim has been made that that bylaw is illegal, that bylaw was approved by the Attorney General when passed in 1991, presumably on the strength of Chapter 40, Section 21. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, yes, Ms. Rice. Thank you very much. Um, so I'll get back to the point that I put my hand up about originally. Um, if you look at the uh, existing, at the bottom of the page in your report, the existing uh, bylaw has warning 50, 75, 100. It goes up by 25 a, a pop after the first 50. Uh, the new one is 75, 100, 150, 200. I have a very simple proposed amendment, Mr. Moderator, that we change the 75 to 50. Can I have a second on that, please? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Okay, wait, which, which, um uh, that the first offense the would warning? be 50, that, no, that the warning would be changed to fifty dollars. Okay. And then the second would be a hundred, hundred and fifty, and two hundred, as originally proposed in the vote. Thank you. Okay, that that's pretty simple. Uh, the next one on the list is um, Janet Leary. Um, Jeannie Leary, precinct nineteen. I just wanted to say last year in February, it was a frigid, frigid night, and I have two little Bichons, and I was taking them over to the sports complex, and I had enough layers on between parkers and fleeces and sweaters um, to go to the Arctic, but 
I brought them over there, and it was really too cold for them, so I picked them up. They were on leashes, but I picked them up and put them inside my coat. And then a neighbor called to talk to me. And out of the blue, two off-leash dogs came charging at me. One of them saw the dogs in my coat and attacked me. And I was severely hurt. I mean, not only was I bitten multiple, multiple times, but it retched out my shoulder. I had to go to the hospital that night. I'm, I went to PT for months and months. Um, cortisone injections and um, fluoroscopy and uh, adhesive shoulder. It went on and on. I, and the woman that night just walked away with a warning. I was completely floored. So I am totally in support of this article. And I support Mr. Carcavaro's comments and the woman who actually brought this up. The, there needs to be more strict fines for this kind of stuff if we're going to have off-leash dogs in town. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Court. Annie LaCourt, Precinct 15. Um, I'd like to just mention something that my, I and my colleagues discussed when we voted on this article, which is that um, one of the difficulties with the um, animal control officer only being able to issue a warning on a first offense is that the chances of the person who uh, committed the first offense of having their dog off leash outside of the legal hours and outside of a park um, the chances of him encountering them again, given the size of the town, the number of dog owners, and the limits of our resources, are pretty slim. So um, our feeling in wanting a fine on the first offense was that that actually might provide some incentive for people to behave better in terms of the application of the leash law. Um, whereas a warning is not going to motivate them at all because they're perfectly aware of how often it is that they themselves will encounter the dog officer with their dog off leash. Um, so I feel that a fine on the first offense is very, very important and just a warning is not effective enforcement. I'd also, as a town meeting member and a dog owner and someone who supported the um, creation of off leash hours in the park, like to give you my personal opinion about this. I think stiff fines are very appropriate here. I cannot think of a good reason for a dog to be off-leash outside of a park where we allow off-leash hours and outside of the off-leash hours. We created the off-leash hours specifically so that those dogs who need off-leash exercise will have a time and a place where they can obtain it. So all of the offenses that have been discussed tonight, all the people who have told you their personal stories, they're walking down a street or a sidewalk or otherwise simply going about their business and there is no excuse for a dog to be let out of the house off leash on Edge Hill Road or to be off leash walking down a sidewalk in the city or whatever and I think stiff fines are appropriate. So I hope that you will not support the substitute motion and I hope that you will support the original action. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fiore? Gentleman right here. Yeah, name I don't know yet. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Carl Wagner, Precinct 11. Um, Wagner. I was going to suggest to the body here that uh, the status quo is probably what we should stay with, and the subsequent motion and the uh, article before us should be uh, left to, to wither. The reason is uh, that if you think about a small crime or a first offense, like forgetting to do your sticker on your car, a warning is all that's needed for most of us to get the sticker on the car. And for most of the offenders who have a first offense with their dog, a warning will be better and probably be more uh, applied by the people who do the application, the police, than a stiff fine. Uh, I also think, while I, I feel sorry for the proponent and the person who spoke earlier about getting injured on a first offense, that what happens in that scenario is a person is injured and the town gets richer by it on the first offense. If the person is injured, perhaps they should have civil law or a lawyer and see the person uh, through the courts that way and actually get some, some remuneration for the injury or the hospitalization they suffered. So I'd encourage you to, uh, to go with the status quo and reject both of these. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ragnar. Ms. Rowe, did you wish to speak? No, okie dokie. Uh, Ms. Rice, you were put on the list. Did you want to be there? No, no, Okay. Well, Ms. Rowe put you there. <laughs> Mr. Smith. Scott? Pass. Pass. Mr. Foskett?
Charlie Foskett, uh, Precinct 8, um, and a very uh, proud dog owner, I should say. And uh, I would strongly support uh, Mr. Warren's uh, comments of a few moments ago. I won't repeat them, but I think th that we should stay with the status quo. I, I also am surprised by Ms. Wright's uh, comments about changing the state law. Uh, about, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, I don't know whether it was before or after the 91 instance that she cited, but there was a debate here at town meeting about the pooper scooper law. And at the time, I made a motion, which was accepted by the town meeting, to increase the fines for the pooper scooper law. And the attorney general, uh, I was told by the town council at the time, that the attorney general had turned that uh, vote down because it was in excess of the uh, recommendations uh, by, of state law. So I think we have a, a law in place. Uh, I, I think, uh, and I would strongly uh, support Mr. Uh, Warren's concept that the uh, you know, remediation or uh, damages could be sought in, the, in cases of severe injury, but uh, that a warning should suffice in the first instance um, in normal cases. Thank you. Thank you. There's a person in the, yes. No, 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 not you. You're the orange short person. That guy, yeah. Oh. Hi, I'm uh, Guillermo Balmon, <coughs> Precinct 14. Um, I think the town needs to be selective as to what fees it is going to be charging because they have to keep in, they have to keep in mind and they have to keep their eyes on the price. And the price is the uh, override. If you're going to be uh, insisting on nickel and diming the residents, those who are pro-dogs or those who are against dogs, then I think that you, you're just getting very distracted. Uh, the, the civilized way is to have the animal control officer call you up and you have a very nice conversation with that officer. And I think, that, and I think that's the end of the matter. Uh, to exact highly punishing fines, then I think it sounds very vindictive. It sounds more like uh, community A, B, C, or D in Massachusetts, and you don't want to go to those communities because they don't want you. They don't want your animals. They don't want your cars. They don't want, uh, uh, if you have their own sticker, they, they, they tell you literally to get out of town. So that I don't want to be told to, um, to uh, or, or actually to, to uh, to have to encounter so many offensive and so many uh, and, and, and so many uh, attacking residents in the town. Uh, uh, pretty soon, I will I will not have a dog to be, to be part of the site because he's dying. He'll die. He'll die tonight. He'll die tomorrow night. So that so that so that is um, I don't I don't need to be pro dog or 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 against dog. But it's just it's just uh, uh, stop nickel and diming all the uh, residents of the town. It's just, it's, it's, it's petty. It's, it's actually very offensive. Uh, just have the officer talk to you personally. Thank you. Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Kleinman. Thank you, Ms. Marley. Stuart Kleinman, Precinct 1. Move the question on all matters related to this article. I have a second. I have a motion to terminate debate on the article in all matters before it. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. no. In my opinion, it is two thirds. Okie dokie. So, all of them have been seconded, madam. We're going to first do Mr. Rudiman's substitute motion, which is to lower the fines. If that loses, then we're going to go Mr. Jameson's, which is to, yeah, what is it, Mr. McCoy? Because it, it was run by me earlier today, and because it's, if you read the, what I said in my letter, if it's very simple, we're going to let it in. He went as far as to give everybody it in writing, and this is simple. I mean, he's changing $50 to 25 75 to 30 and 50 to 100. It's not a complicated where he's adding new bylaw provisions. He's not giving us new things out of the blue, which are paragraphs and paragraphs long. It's three dollar signs that he's changing. That's pretty simple. I mean, it couldn't get any simpler. Well, this one by the 
Well, you've got to get to a mic, a mic first of all. And, and, and this is a, frankly, it's a, it's a procedural debate that you can have with me later, but it's my ruling that this is okay. If you want to talk to me about it at the, at the break, I will. But I don't want to have a procedural Okay, uh, I, I, respect your, I respect your, uh, your, uh, your yeah. opinion. But this uh, is but the it just, it's, simple it thing didn't, you can do. Did, uh, listening to the debate tonight, it doesn't seem to be that simple. Uh, that's my uh, observations. Mm -hmm. uh, there's already been two substitute motions on it. And, uh, there are two There's also motions. some questions regarding state law. So it doesn't seem that simple to me. Well, you could have gone with the vote against termination. You, it's, they want to terminate. We have two substitutes. What we're going to do is first vote on Michael's rudiments, which is to decrease the fines to, as listed on his piece of paper and it shows up here $25 for the second offense, $30 for the third and fifty dollars for the fourth. <coughs> that loses, we're going to vote on Mr. Jamison's to reduce the selectman's recommended vote to fifty dollars for the second, and then we're going to vote on the selectman's on the first offense, and then we'll see what happens after that. All right, so we have Michael Ruderman's substitute motion. You all understand what I'm putting forth? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All in favor of the Mr. Ruderman's substitute as presented, please say yes. Yes. Opposed say no. No. That loses. <clears throat> so, now we're going to vote on Mr. Jamison's to reduce the first offense to $50. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed say no. No. My opinion is a negative vote. That loses. We now have... There you go. Now you have three and a half people. Four. <laughs> oh. All right, five people rose. Same tellers, all in favor of Mr. Jamison's motion to turn, make the first offense $50, please rise. Yeah, you can come. One up front. This is on fifty dollars. The left? Twelve. Twelve. Center. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Center left. Center right. Thirteen. Ten. Ten. On the right. Okay, all opposed to Mr. Jameson, please rise. Nine, up front nine. Twenty nine on the right. Right center. Oh, we're going backwards this time because he was quick. Twenty seven. Twenty seven. Twenty-one. Thirty. Thirty. Hey, someone stole my calculator. Oh. Oh. oh, two off. Oh. Yeah, sixty in the affirmative, one hundred sixteen in the negative. So I guess my call is right. 60 in the affirmative, 116 in the negative. Okay, now we have the recommended vote of the selectmen as presented with no amendments. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed say no. No. My opinion is an affirmative vote. Okay. Really? All right, five people rose. Uh, we're gonna have a standing vote again, same tellers. All in favor of the uh, bylaw, please raise. Uh -huh. Nine. Nine up front. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
32 on the right. 33 in the right center. 37 left center. 29. 29 on the left. Okay, all opposed to the uh, opposed by law amendment, please rise. All opposed. He proudly stands. You want to tell it twice. Three up front. Three and a negative up front. Twelve. Twelve on the left. Five. Five in the left center. Ten. Right center. Five on the right. It is approved 140 in the positive, 35 in the negative. That brings us to Article 20. Bylaw Amendment Minuteman Bikeway, the recommended vote is of no action. That's what I have, right? Yes, no action. All in favor of no action, please say yes. Yes. All opposed? No action on number 20. That brings us to 21. Uh, I'm going to personally make a motion on Article 21 and 22 to postpone to Wednesday. And I'll, I'll Wednesday? No, no, Monday we have to give it to you in writing, to next Wednesday, because we are meeting on tomorrow night to finalize our recommended votes on these two articles. Okay, so all in favor of postponing till Wednesday, 5, 4, and 20 and 21, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? Thank you very much, appreciate it. Yeah, 21 and 22. That brings us to 23. Bylaw Amendment, Sidewalk Snow Removal Enforcement. <coughs> Remove your snow and ice or the town's going to charge you accordingly. Up to 300 bucks, I think. Went the long way. A little walk. Thank you. Um, this bylaw enforcement tool is really a way to give us a little more um, teeth for the people that are not doing their snow removal in a timely way. It gives us another um, way of really trying to get the residential and commercial um, abutters to sidewalks to cle clean their sidewalks in a timely way. Um, this is not something that we would do, obviously, to people that are elderly. This is something that we would do to repeat offenders. The, the point of it is to really assist the police and the DPW in a very difficult time where, where we're doing an awful lot of work and we need other people to step up. Um, and if you have any questions, Mike uh, Rademacher, or our DPW um, director, can answer them for you. Mr. Berkowitz? Thanks, Mr. Moderator, Bill Berkowitz, Precinct 8. I'm sympathetic to the intent of the article. Can I ask if someone might know the number of fines for violation for failure to shovel during this past winter season? Mr. Sullivan, do you know that offhand? <coughs> Current fines? Uh, do you know? Does anyone know? Ms. Rice, do you know? <laughs> Current fine? <coughs> Is there a current state your question again, Mr. Berkowitz? Does anyone know the number of fines for failure to shovel under the current bylaw during this past winter season? That I don't know. Oh, you don't know. I thought you said, what's the current fee? I'm sorry. Um, Chief Ryan, is Chief Ryan there? 
Did, did you have any tickets for no shoveling this year? Good evening, Mr. Moderator. Frederick Ryan. Uh, I don't know. Uh, last time we checked midwinter, uh, the manager asked that question. It was in the area of 50 uh, combination warnings and fines. We always try to uh, give a warning first. Uh, we can find right off the bat uh, if, if they've violated the bylaw. We try to give a warning, give them an opportunity to come in com into compliance, and then we issue a citation. Thank you. I appreciate that. I would uh, suggest that it would be helpful if accurate records for this uh, be kept in the future so that we can have some, we're working with exact numbers. I would suggest that the figure of 50 ballpark, at least through midwinter, is low. And I'd offer, and someone perhaps can correct me, that the reason for that, a primary reason for that, is lack of sufficient staffing to uh, enforce uh, the current bylaw. Uh, if that's the case, uh, then I'm wondering what the net effect of this uh, bylaw might amount to in terms of uh, if it's true that there's not going to be adequate uh, personnel to enforce uh, increased uh, fines or liens, for that matter. And I'm interested in if someone might comment on that. Would you care to comment, Mr. Sullivan? Now, I know our office gets a number of complaints about uh, unshoveled sidewalks, and there are a number of people that do go away for the winter or away. Um, so even with finding uh, the people, the sidewalk still does not get shoveled, um, and the school kids are left to uh, walk across those sidewalks. We just thought that this would be an additional tool in those instances where we can't get compliance right away for whatever reason, and again, a lot of cases, people may not even be home, whether it's that day or that week or that month. Uh, this just gives a tool to make sure that the job gets done one way or another, um, and then the town would bill whatever the costs of having that uh, shovel, uh, that uh, snow removed, the town would bill the home homeowner for that cost. I understand that it it's an additional tool, but I do question how effective a tool it can be if there's not sufficient enforcement for it. But I understand your point, Mr. Sullivan. I do have one other point, which is uh, that I think there are other ways to increase compliance besides uh, increasing fines or liens. Not that I'm opposed to this, necessarily. Uh, and I think one way is to, one of several ways, is to, it would be great <laughs> if there were a publicly available list of high school kids, maybe even middle school kids, uh, who that was well publicized, uh, available to shovel snow on the website or advocate or through the Arlington list and perhaps someone here from the school committee or elsewhere might enlighten me if there is such a list now available. There is such a list. Where would we find that? Uh, that's the Council on Aging that uh, keeps that list. Mm -hmm. Okay. I confess to not being accurately apprised of that, but I uh, thank you for pointing that out, and I hope that there might be ways of further publicizing that in conjunction with uh, this uh, measure, we, if it Yes, passes. we do make an effort to uh, publicize that on our website uh, probably a dozen times each winter, uh, advising people, you know, snow advisories, and that you can contact the Council on Aging if you need assistance. Uh, so it is well publicized that people will go onto a website and the occasional newspaper article will point that out as well. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Lavalli, you're next on the list. Yes. Mr. Kleinman. I got you on the list. Mr. Marquis, you can sit down. I got you on the list. Thank you, Mr. Marley. Stuart Kleinman, Precinct 1. I have a problem here. My question is, how are we going to do this? We really, really enforce it now. For example, at the end of my street, there's a business all winter long they piled snow at the, on the sidewalk. I saw elderly people, I saw children, I saw a blind person having to go into the street all the time. We complained, they never did anything about it. I go around town and I see, I see constant businesses, houses with snow piled up all winter long and it's not getting enforced. So all of a sudden we're gonna increase the fines, great and it's not gonna get enforced. So it's another law we have on the books that we don't do anything about. So, it's, so it's, we, have, we have more paperwork and we don't do anything about it. Mr. Dunn. What I, actually, if you read the recommended vote, what it says is the town can send shovelers out and fine you for their services. Is that correct, Mr. Sullivan? Yeah, 
They can send people out, shovel that walk, and then send that person a bill. Correct, except yeah. we're not doing that. Well, this will allow us to do it. Except we, we haven't done it. We, we already have a statute on the books that's not getting currently enforced. I, I don't trust if we vote this that this is going to get enforced either. We still have people walking in the street, taking danger in their hands because they can't go on a sidewalk. And, when I, and I can tell you what really makes me angry is when I see an elderly person have to walk in the middle of the street in winter. And that's in addition to children and others. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Carmen? <coughs> Did you want to speak? Yeah. Grant Cook, Precinct 6. Um, I don't think this is that complex of an issue. The enforcement, I think, is a very valid concern. If we have a new law and it doesn't get paid attention to, it's sort of useless. But I get up every morning, I walk through East Arlington over to Cabrera to get my coffee, and you know, most of us help each other out. We shovel, we snow blow. Sometimes the sidewalk tracks aren't very wide, but we get it done. But there's occasionally a house, and it looks like Ice Station Zebra. You're just <laughs> walking over it, you're trying to balance. And this year, I've actually been carrying a, a newborn son on my stomach a lot. And, you start to appreciate that the offenders here aren't the random person away for a couple of days. It's a person who doesn't even pay attention and screw it. I'm not even going to bother to shovel. You don't get compacted ice on your sidewalks because you miss a couple of days. So frankly, any tool that gives us the ability to, to find these people and to really, in the end, clean the sidewalk, because that's what has to happen here, I'm in support of. I hope the town enforces it, but let's give them the tool to enforce in the first place. Thank you. Mr. O'Reilly? Steve O'Riordan, Precinct 11. Uh, my only concern is that uh, I know that I shovel my sidewalk uh, pretty religiously. However, being on a corner lot, the DPW constantly piles, uh, you know, a mountain on the corners. And so I just hope that if we do get into the, you send out your guys to shovel something that I'd already shoveled, but you already filled over. I mean, I, I know the town's very reasonable in dealing with these issues, so I just want to make sure that we're uh, thinking of those things as well as when we set this up. But I think this is a great idea, uh, actually deploying our, our troops to clear something up and then uh, building the, uh, the offenders is probably a very reasonable approach if, if those folks aren't going to do it themselves. Thank you, Mr. O'Reilly. Mr. Chappett? Yes. Mr. Foskett? Charlie Foskett, uh, Precinct 8. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> first of all, I'd like to remind everyone that um, most of the sidewalks in the town are actually owned by the residents, in that um, the, uh, the town is proposing here to increase its, the fines that it already has on you for, I'm sorry, most of the sidewalks in the town are owned by the town, not by the residents, and they have a fine on you place. for not cleaning the town's sidewalks. And there's a certain, um, I, I think, a, a fundamental inequity in that. When we passed the, the, um, the original bylaw years ago, I, I don't remember, it was 10 or 15 years ago, the, um, it was only after uh, some debate that we managed to get an exemption for senior citizens to be included in the original bylaw. And I hope that this um, change in the bylaw does not uh, remove that exemption for se senior citizens. Uh, I do believe that we have a requirement in the current bylaw, which um, again, I hope it isn't changed here, that citizens have uh, at least eight hours after the end of a snowstorm in order to remove the, remove the snow. Um, this year, I think, as people pointed out, it's been a particularly difficult year. But um, w one of the problems here is that oftentimes this, in the course of a storm, the snow turns to ice, and then it's very difficult to remove whether you have a snow thrower or, or whatever. And um, uh, I, I don't know how the town intends to treat that, but there are many occasions I found where the, where the snow is not gonna move no matter what, what you do. And you can, you can spend a lot of time and energy trying to get rid of it and it won't happen. Um, I also would like to point out that I think that at least in my view, the town is one of the biggest violators here. Uh, first of all, I can tell you that on Jason Street, outside Menominee Rocks Park, 
the snow was not shoveled in front of that on, on the town's property for months. Okay, so that uh, I don't know um, how the how the other pieces of property in the town uh, were addressed, but that was certainly not addressed. Secondly, I can't count the number of days that um, I and other neighbors in my neighborhood cleared the snow off their walks, only for uh, you know some period of time later the snow plows come by. Excuse me. Uh, snow, snow plows come by, and uh, you know th snow and ice is thrown back. Uh, back onto your, your, your walk in your driveway again. And I think it was last year's town meeting and the town meeting before, we had an extremely lengthy debate over whether or not the town was cleaning these uh, corner cuts around schools and, and to have access to certain parts of town on a timely basis. And I think we all came to the conclusion that it wasn't happening on a timely basis. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this and, and coming to the conclusion that, first of all, uh, the town is contributing to the problem here. Secondly, um, the, the current bylaws are not being enforced. And thirdly, we're proposing to increase the fines or increase the penalties, um, except in the case I notice here we have a warning on the first offense. Um, uh, again, in, in what I consider an egregious way uh, on citizens of the town, and I strongly recommend that we not support this article. Mr. Butler, you're next. Mark Butler, Precinct 19, and I support the article. I live on a hill. And, okay. I think I'm getting assigned to speak up here. Okay. Uh, I live on a hill. It's steep. It's Overlook Road. And one of the problems that I saw this past winter were a number of people who just didn't bother cleaning their sidewalk. In fact, one person had the plow people that plowed his driveway simply dump the snow either side on the sidewalk, which left school kids trying to travel through a pile of snow that was taller than I was. And enforcement or not, if the town had the authority to just come in and clean that off and then charge for the cost of doing that, I think that that's a valid point. Whether or not we're finding anybody, at least we can get the sidewalks cleared and make travel safe. And I think that we should support this motion just because of that. It gives town a tool to get the sidewalks cleared and we don't have to worry about going to court or f passing fines or anything else. As soon as the person's, as soon as the decision is that that sidewalk needs to be cleared, it can be cleared and it's done, and we can worry about any fines after the fact. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, it's 9.30. Let's take a 10-minute break.
Bruins three, Canadians two, four minutes, 11 seconds remaining. Four, four. Eight in.
Please come to order. Wait.
Please come to order. Yes, John. Three to three at the end of three. Please come to order. Um, two announcements, three announcements. One, it's three to three at the end of the third period. We're going to go into overtime. Ah, okay, that's what matters. We have a new town meeting member who was just elected for his precinct. We're going to swear him in. And Ms. Weaver is telling me that everybody's not checking in at the beginning of the meeting. You've got to make sure you check in at the beginning of the meeting for two reasons. One, that's how we can show we have a quorum. And two, it keeps attendance so when next time you get go to get elected, someone says you didn't show up for any meetings when you did. That's the official record. So where do you go? Where's our new town meeting member who just came? All right, raise your right hand. Aye. Do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially perform the duties incumbent upon me as a town meeting member of the town of Arlington in accordance with the bylaws, town manager act, town manager act, and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So help me God. Thank you. Mr. McGann, you are next. Mr. McGann has the floor. Why don't you come forward? Kevin McGann, 16. Can you hear me? Does this work? Hello. It's working. Um, I, I only have a little, a few things to say. Um, I am, like everyone else here, also in favor of snow removal. And uh, I am, however, really opposed to this uh, particular article. And what is bothering me is the way things are done in it, the method that it picks to um, implement itself. And what I'm referring to is what is my understanding that eight hours after a snowfall, the town could unilaterally drive up to my sidewalk, clean my sidewalk, shovel it, and charge me up to $300. I believe that is within what is written here. And I find that repugnant. We have a system now that has graduated um, fines. And if it doesn't work, it's for lack of enforcement. I do not think we should vote for this simply because it's not a good idea ever, and I say this cautiously, to give any government power the ability to do what this gives the town the ability to do without consulting, without warning, um, basically, as I said, on their own impulse. So I understand that not many people see it that way. And as I said, I'm in favor of snow removal, but not with this language. And this is a, a sort of, uh, uh, a, a, an approach that I have towards the way communities should operate and governments should operate. So, and I do not do not favor the Tea Party. So that's all. Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Sullivan. It's just one to make it clear here. We're not talking about fines here or three hundred dollars. We're talking about. Um, charging people for the service of having the snow removed. Uh, and as Mr. Foskett said earlier, um, these are, it is public property, it is a sidewalk, uh, but nonetheless there's a legal uh, obligation on the part of the resident to remove that snow. And um, if they're not there, 
Um, generally, what we do, the police department gives a warning. If it's not cleared, they may issue a ticket, not a $300 ticket. Uh, if it's still not removed, then we may consider bringing in someone to shovel the snow, and then we give them a bill for that snow removal. That's just a charge for service. It's not a fine. We're not talking about a fine here. So we're just this tool that we're looking for is just that after re repeated warnings uh, to get it done, if it's still not done, that we have the opportunity to go in there, have it removed, and bill them for the service, period. And if they fail to... Uh, pay for it, that we have, an op we have a mechanism where we can collect on that bill. Mr. Warden. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Warden, Precinct 8. Uh, I have uh, an amendment to the, uh, um, to the proposal of the Board of Selectmen, and uh, I did put this on the, um, on the uh, listserv thing, and I, I did. Oh, there it is. Technology. I hope it's large enough to read. Um, but, I, but, but I will read it to you. Um, uh, I move the following amendment to the recommended vote of the Board of Selectmen add following the words in addition to or in place of any applicable fines the words provided that no such action shall be taken till the town by the town until all sidewalks abutting town-owned property have been cleared to the standards set forth herein <coughs> now <laughs> i um and most of my neighbors uh, in jason street um were pretty good about clearing our sidewalks and um when I, but uh, we've had occasion, uh, as Mr. Foskett mentioned, uh, walking, uh, walking our leashed dog uh, up Jason Street on the, on the sidewalks properly cleared to the most part, pretty well, by the residents. You get it from Anatomy Rocks Park, a town owned property that's about, oh, one and a half, two house lots wide. It's uh, an impenetrable uh, mess of snow. Um, now, and, and this, if this were the only one, I'd say, well, they overlooked it. Who knows about Monotomy Rocks Park? But <clears throat> uh, in other uh, walking that uh, my wife and I have done uh, during the past winter, um, we found uh, such places as Arlington High School, sidewalk not shoveled, uh, Summer Street, uh, adjacent to the bike path just beyond the Napa store, up till you get to the first house, uh, not shoveled. Um, Oh, Pleasant Street, along beside the old burying ground. Uh, if it was just ice, it would be one thing, but it's ice that's been tromped on and walked on, and it's full of holes and stuff, and just Im almost impassable. Uh, Maple Street, uh, uh, around the, uh, the Central School, and, and 23 Maple Street, and so on. So, the, the, town, um, uh, the town, I think, needs to lead by example. And of all of us householders, business owners, apartment house owners, and so on, uh, are to clear their walks, and we should, then the town should clear its walks. And until the town does, sets a good example, then I, I, I think it is going to be very hard to uh, have the enforcement of this. I'm reminded of a line in the Bible that says, uh, before you try to cast the speck out of your brother's eye, Take the beam out of your own eye. Thank you. Is there a second? Mr. Horowitz? Gary Horowitz, Precinct 18. Uh, the part of this article that I like is the part where the town will come and clear the property. However, without an override, there's not going to be anybody to shovel your snow. Thank you. Mr. Smith?
Uh, Scott Smith, Precinct 5. Uh, I rise in support, and I'm inclined to support Mr. Warden's amendment, too. Uh, I think it's, uh, talking about my own neighborhood, corner lot, I have a lot of sidewalk to clear. Last winter was tough. I sympathize. I dealt with it. Uh, but in our own neighborhood, we know it's important, except for a few people who don't get it. And I think this gives us a tool to deal with the people who are away, not responding, and you're still all the school kids going to Thompson, walking in the street. So I'd urge support. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next on the list is Mr. Cacavaro. Thomas Cacavaro, Precinct 11. Nobody knows snow better than me. I've done it for 40 years. Okay? I'm out there when it first starts, and especially this year, I've been out many hours or many days after. I cover one end of the town to the other end of the town. Ask me anything about it, and I can tell you what happened. More than ever, people have stopped me, including businesses, during this year and asked me, we shovel our sidewalks, we shovel our businesses out like we're supposed to. What happens? We go to bed, you wake up the next morning, the town decided to clean the streets, clear them, make them wider, three, four, five, six hours later, whatever. That sidewalk is loaded, it's frozen. Should they have to do it again or should we have to find them? It's not their problem, it's our problem. We have to stop every time somebody makes a comment. And I saw this all winter when people got up in front of the selectmen and talked about the snow. It's not the DPW, it's not the few seven, eight, nine, ten employees we have that plow. They're doing the best they can. You can't do a town with the, with the DPW employees we have. It's impossible, you can't clean the snow when the snow stops with the DPW employees we have. They're tired, they have to go home and sleep. We have a habit, let them go home and sleep, which they have to, and then we wait, because we do not want to hire. We do not want to pay to clean this town. The town can't clean the town themselves. I've driven by fire stations many, many hours after. They're not done. I've driven by schools, they're not done. 50 feet from my front window is the corner of Edge Hill and Ridge Street where the kids cross to go to Bishop School. I watched it for almost a month and a half with 12 feet of snow on that sidewalk that my poor neighbor, Mr. Bill Madem, could not shovel it anymore. Nobody could. Nobody did it. I finally got tired of it and my company went down there and took 80 yards of snow out one night so the kids could cross. 80 yards. It's not the DPW's fault. It's not the people that plow for the DPW people that plow for us. They can't do a better job. So when somebody stands up and makes a comment, don't jump on them and say the DPW people. Nobody's saying that. We as a town have to take responsibility. We have to spend the money. We have to hire. Pickup trucks are not going to clean the town. They're not going to clean the town. We've lost a lot of good contractors over the years because we didn't take care of them. If you looked out your window all winter, all you saw was pickup trucks. You want to know why? Because they're the cheapest. They can't plow. They only plow driveways. So what, what's the answer here? We shovel our sidewalks. We shovel everything. The town has to go out after, which they do, absolutely. But these guys are going to get rest. Instead of us hiring immediately contractors to start clearing and cleaning, they block us all in again. It's frozen snow, and you want to find us. We have to, we have to clean up our act, people. We have to tell our town officials, spend the money and do it right. Well, you know what? Don't do it. Thank you. Ms. LaCourt. Annie LaCourt, Precinct 15. Um, with the moderator's indulgence, I just have another question for the Chief of Police. Yes, ma'am. Oops, I'll start there. 
Chief Ryan? You ask the question then, he'll come yes, and answer. I just want to clarify um, for uh, Mr. Berkowitz. Um, uh, I believe that what you were trying to say was not that we don't know how many fines and uh, warnings we issued. It's simply that you haven't looked at that piece of data recently. Am I correct? Thank you. Frederick Ryan, Chief of Police. Selectmen always say it better than I do. Yes, it's exactly what you said. <laughs> yeah, we have so the data in our database, if, uh, and I'd be happy to research it for the next meeting. I just don't have a, a clear memory of, of uh, okay. how many violations were issued. So we do know every single time we've sent a warning or a fine, et cetera. Yes, ma'am, we do. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I'd just like to fa say a few words in support of um, this particular tool for the town, um, uh, particularly in light of Mr. Kleinman's uh, question about enforcement. It is true it's very difficult for us to enforce the snow by law. It's a resource problem like the enforcement of many laws that, um, let's say, don't seem like as high a priority as stopping speeders or um, taking down drug dealers or all the other things that our officers do. Um, but I actually think that this will make some of that enforcement easier because after we have um, discovered that we have a recalcitrant homeowner or an absentee landlord who is not shoveling their sidewalks and we've tried several times to get them to do so, we have a way of getting the sidewalk cleared and we have a way of getting reimbursed for having that sidewalk cleared so we will be able to hire high school students or contractors or whoever and simply send a bill to the property owner and the sidewalk will be cleared. I spend most of my time as a selectman during a busy snow season fielding two kinds of calls. The first kind of call is a call from a constituent who says, hey, there's a town sidewalk, Jason Street is a good example, that has not been cleared. And then I get on the phone to the DPW director and the, the town manager and I say, you know what? We have to set a good example here. We need to get that sidewalk cleared. We can't find anybody. We can't issue any citations. We can't do anything until we've cleared those sidewalks. Um, however, I can only get the ones that someone complains to me about. Um, there are a few that I regularly inquire about um, because I know I'm going to hear from people about them. The other kind of call I get is from somebody who is panicked because they don't have any way to get around town except by walking on sidewalks. And there are uncleared sidewalks in front of, front of private homes between them and walking their child to school, getting to mass, or getting to a store, and they are not someone who drives, and it's very difficult for them to get around. So those are the people that I have the hardest time helping, because I can go and I can look at their walking route, and I can ask the town manager to issue a citation, but I can't cause the sidewalks that are hanging them up to get cleared. And particularly when those sidewalks are on main streets and walking routes to schools, we need this tool in our toolbox. It's a common tool that other cities and towns have. I think, I don't know, Somerville, Cambridge uh, have similar rules. So I don't believe the town will abuse the ability. The statute here reads... Um, uh, may result in the town causing removal of snow and ice. It doesn't read shall. And even under our current system, we don't enforce by um, hitting you over the head with it. We try to figure out why somebody hasn't cleared their sidewalk and get them appropriate help first. And then issue a fine if we really have someone who is recalcitrant. So I hope you will look favorably upon this um, uh, particular bylaw and give us this tool in our toolbox because I think it will help us with the kinds of problems that we have all over town in a busy winter like this. I have a very different relationship with snow than most of you do because I was born and raised in Wisconsin. So <laughs> I actually um, don't mind snow and I like walking in it, but I can tell you that for most of my constituents it's a real hassle and they need it taken out of their way. Thank you. Mr. Deist. John Dice, Precinct 13. Now, periodically, the town meeting gets into a mode that I always find very interesting. And it's the sort of we against the town mode. And that's just bizarre because we are the town. You know, they is us. And the process this winter 
of seeing little kids going to school, trying to get over the mounds of snow that people have left on their walks, I thought was almost criminal. And many, many times I've seen mothers struggling, with carrying infants uh, and, and, and their own children, trying to walk over great mounds of snow, ending up walking in the street, and then people would go by in their cars way too fast, and it was a very, very dangerous situation. If you think it's unfair to an owner of a house who has not plowed his walk, uh, and that you might vote that way, I would suggest you just think about the small child who has to go to school with his mother on one of those bad days when there are enormous barriers of snow in the way. One way or another, we have to get the snow off of the sidewalks so kids and elderly people can walk on the sidewalks. Thank you very much. Mr. Lavalli, did you want your name? Okay, passed. Mr. Marr. John Maher, Precinct 14. Uh, I would uh, stand uh, and urge you to uh, not support the uh, amendment. Uh, essentially, you'd be, I, in my view, you'd be asking for a legal nightmare. I mean, who's going to certify that all of the sidewalks of Buddingtown property have been cleared? Just that, that's not going to happen. If you pass that, you might have, you'll totally eviscerate the whole idea behind the Warren article. You have to give credit to town officials, I think, to a certain extent, that they're going to exercise discretion. Only those people who are inveterate or violators of this bylaw are, are going to find themselves after warnings, uh, are, are numerous warnings, they're going to find themselves, you know, they're going to have to finally get religion here and clear their sidewalks. And it is not happening now. Uh, to suggest, by the way, that, you know, the town has to do, set it all, their own example. I mean, have you looked at how many people are still left in the public works department? Uh, it's been reduced by something like two-thirds over the years. We just don't have the people anymore. If you want to spend enough money to clear the sidewalks sufficiently, then you're going to have to double the appropriation. And who's going to lose their jobs to do that? I strongly urge support of the, the, uh, the main motion of the selectman without any amendments. Thank you. Um, Mr. McCory. Uh, Hugh McCrory, Precinct 20. Um, I rise in uh, support of the article and in opposition to the amendment. I agree with the previous speaker. Uh, it, the amendment uh, effectively makes the original article toothless. Uh, um, we all know, I mean, I think I also wanted to speak about the elephant in the room, which is lack of resources. It's already been mentioned quite a few times. Uh, I don't think there's any danger of the town of Arlington uh, um, unilaterally uh, plowing people's streets. We, we can't even enforce the uh, existing uh, um, bylaws with regards to fines. I think this, the spirit of this amendment is to, to help clear our streets with minimal uh, expense. It's our town. I agree with the other speakers. It's not town and us. We are the town. Uh, so there's nobody else. It's just uh, the town of Arlington. And we've elected the leaders. So. I, I urge you to uh, to support the amendment, uh, or to support the original article, and uh, I guess I, uh, not to uh, support the amendment, although it was very eloquently put forward by Mr. Mr. Warden. So thanks. Thank you, uh, Mr. Schlickman. You're next. Paul Schlickman, Precinct Nine. Motion to terminate debate on all items under this article. Oh, you missed your shot. We have a motion to terminate debate on. Mr. Dunn is going to give us an update in the Bruins, so he's been texting or blogging. While Bruins won four to. three in overtime. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll let that one slide, but put your. Put <laughs> Put your toys away. Uh, we have a motion to terminate debate. It's been seconded. All in favor of terminating debate. Motion on all items before us on the articles. Please say yes. Yes. Opposed say no. No. Oh, you lose. <laughs> all right. 
Once again, we got one of these amendments that hasn't been given to us in advance. Um, I really would want these things in advance. It makes it hard for myself, for Ms. Rowe, ahead of the Board of Selectmen, and for Ms. Rice to look at these and, and make determinations on the fly. Um, I think this one is pretty simple because it's adding one line. Um, so I'm going to let this one in, but from now on, please, you've got to get these things to us 48 hours. I'm going to stick with that because it's second or third time tonight and it's kind of causing trouble for me. Um, so we have Mr. Warden's amendment to add the words provided that no such action shall be taken by the town until all sidewalks abutting town-owned property have been cleared to the standard set forth herein. All in favor of Mr. Warden's amendment, please say yes. Yes. All opposed say no. No. Okay, that's defeated. We now have before us a recommended vote of the Board of Selectmen as printed in their article. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed say no. No. My opinion is an affirmative vote. Okay, that brings us to Article 24. Recommend a vote of the Board of Selectmen is of no action. Mr. Loretti, right, Ms. Lo um, Ms. Rowe? Yes. Go ahead. Um, this is a 10 taxpayer article, and um, I know that the proponent is going to get up and speak to it. I'm, to, I'm here to tell you why the selectmen voted no action. Um, it is um, our duty to provide um, email records under the state public records law. The, um, that law allows a certain charge, which is 20 cents per page for photocopies and time spent in search and segregation of records at an hourly rate of the lowest paid employee capable of performing the task. This um, bylaw would substantially cut the cost of a um, public information request and as people have noticed, yes, sir. Excuse me, Mr. No action votes for discussion. I that's. I think we should let Mr. Loretti put his proposed vote okay. in first, Ms. Rowe. Me. Then you can get up and speak okay. against it. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jefferson. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Chris Loretti, Precinct Seven. And I would like to uh, move to postpone discussion of this article. And I'd like to explain why. I was planning to um, distribute this article on Monday. Last Wednesday, I sent copies of it both to the town moderator and to town council, um, asking uh, the town moderator to uh, see if it was within scope and town council to see if it wasn't already perfect. And if it wasn't perfect, to make it perfect herself. Um, since that time, I've heard absolutely nothing from town council, although the town moderator promptly responded that it was within scope. So I'm in the situation now where I have a substitute motion. I haven't distributed it to anyone because I have not heard anything from town council. And the other um, thing I did is I believe it would be very helpful for town meeting to understand just how much people are paying for email requests. Well, wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's not get into the discussion okay. of the article. Are you going to do something or not? Well, I, would, I was going to ask town council, um, one, whether she is, is going to uh, make my article perfect if it isn't already, and two, whether the town was going to respond to this public records request so I would know when well, town meeting would have the information. And based on that response, I would then pick a date to which we could postpone. Now, I expect she'll probably get up and say it can't well, be made perfect, but I'd still like to know the dates. Carts before the horse. Why don't you just postpone the thing for like two weeks and then endeavor to get a response right, and, if, and get something on our chairs by Monday? Monday. Monday. Well, no, if he's going to give us a substitute motion, he need for 48 hours, like I just said. So, so what, what would that date be? Uh, four, seven, nine. Five, nine is a week from Monday. That's the special. 511. Uh, then I would like to uh, move consideration of this article to Wednesday, May 11. He's postponing, Mr. Jefferson. Again, point of order. Yeah. The policy of the town meeting has been a no action vote. There's no discussion. We, we, don't, have I, we don't have a substitute. I agree. That's why I cut him off. He's, he's arguing his motion 
before he even put it in front of us. Again, and we're going to table something that we don't even have. Correct. We've done that in the we've we've done that in the past. He's he's making the point that there's nothing in front of us, so we're tabling something we don't have, and we have done that in the past. But we shouldn't be talking about. It. If you want to postpone, you stand up and say, "I want to postpone," and you postpone it. And he gave us his reason. So this motion to postpone is it seconded? Okay, he's postponing to 511. All in favor, say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. No. In my opinion, it is affirmative. So that would be postponing it to 511, Ms. Libretti. I would suggest you get something on our chairs as soon as possible. Uh, you have to take that up with her, sir. I can't ask her to do anything. Uh, Chris, if we're on Article 25. If you, if you don't like what she's doing, take it up with her boss, which is Mr. Sullivan and the Board of Selectmen. Well, whoops, it's Article 25. Recommended vote is no, of the Board of Selectmen is no action. Again, no action. Does anybody have anything else to do with 25? Okay. You don't want to do anything on that one, Chris? That was your recommended vote. Okay. All right, no action is recommended vote of the Board of Selectmen. All in favor of no action on 25, please say yes. Yes. All opposed say no. Nope, no action. That brings us to number 26. Uh, motor votes on Spy Pond and Wakes. Recommended vote of the Board of Selectmen is no action. Um, does anyone want to do anything on that? Sir, please come forward. Hi, my name is Ethan Zimmer. I'm from Precinct 6. There is a substitute motion you'll find on your chairs today. I would like to uh, postpone debate on this until next Monday, May 2nd, so that a person from Friends of Spy Pond Park can be here to speak to you about it. Okay, and we're just getting this today, so that would comport with our 24, 48-hour rule, et cetera. Um, all in favor of postponing to Monday, 5-2. Please say yes. Yes. All opposed? No, it is postponed to 5-2. We're disposing a lot of things by postponement. Number 27, vote. What is the same darn thing? Motor boat regulations on Spy Pond. Recommend a vote of, vote of selectmen is no action. All in favor, no action. Please say yes. Yes. All opposed, say no. No action. Number 28, Home Rule Legislation, Sale of Wine and Malt Beverage in Theaters. Go go down to the theater, Regent Theater in the Capitol and get yourself a beer. Ms. LaRoe. Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, this is an initiative that was started by Selectman Jack Hurd in conjunction with Richard Freeman of the Capitol Theater, who is on his way down the steps so he can address town meeting. Um, as a town meeting member from Precinct 6, I'm asking for permission for him to speak to you. Um, he is not a resident of the town. Is it a prerogative of the meeting to have Mr. Freeman speak? All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. No. The gentleman can't speak. He has the remainder Thank of you. your time. Um, I want to introduce him because I think that um, Mr. Come Freeman, forward. as the owner of the Somerville Theater and the Capitol Theater um, with Mr. Hurd came to the Board of Selectmen to ask us to consider this. It's worked very well in Somerville and he has a long history of um, how well it's worked and what kinds of problems, if any, have occurred. And I thought it would be best to have very practical advice from a man who's done it in one city um, and would like to bring it to Arlington. The Regent Theater is very interested in this. We did include all um, theaters that have more than 100 seats, so that could include the um, Arlington Center for the Arts and the Arlington Friends of the Drama, if they so wished. Um, Mr. Freeman. Thank you. 
My name is Richard Freeman. I live in Lincoln. And I grew up in Belmont. Um, congratulations to the Bruins, first of all. <laughs> um, we own and operate the Capitol Theater and, as Clarissa mentioned, also the Somerville Theater. And um, I just wanted to make my remarks very short about why we are in support of, of this warrant number 28. Um, Capitol Theater has been a part and parcel of Arlington for almost 90 years now. And uh, it is a rarity in that it is one of the few remaining surviving neighborhood theaters, despite all the challenges in the industry, big box, uh, cinema chains, um, myriad choices for entertainment that everybody has, and of course the tricky economic situation. We have spared no effort in restoring the Capitol Theater, keeping, trying to keep the theater relevant, and providing Arlingtonians and neighboring residents a, an affordable movie ticket and concessions. Um, we have fought and obtained first-run films at the, at the Capitol. We provide, um, we think, a variety of amenities that we've added, great movies for children and adults, um, an extensive birthday party program, opera and ballet, ballet uh, broadcasts in HD, and of course our ice cream parlor. But we find ourselves in a position that we constantly are needing to um, do everything we can to keep the capital uh, an attractive entertainment destination. And that is why we think that providing adult patrons the opportunity to enjoy a glass of beer or wine at the theater will, will really help. Um, and as Clarissa mentioned, we also own the Somerville Theater. And since 2007, uh, patrons have had the opportunity to, to purchase a, a, a glass of beer or wine there. And since then, about a half a million patrons have entered the theater, and uh, not all have bought a beer and wine. I don't want to give the wrong idea. Uh, but those who have, we have had not one single problem uh, since that time. So we respectfully request your support for this measure, and we think it would be a, a big plus for the theater and would help us uh, continue uh, keeping the theater as a wonderful asset in our community. Thank you very much. Thank you. One of the things that um, Richard didn't mention that should be mentioned is his um, employees do take a tips course so that they do learn about serving alcohol and um, how to card people and, and really have the understanding of, of what serving alcohol means. It's the same process that we have in our restaurants in town already. And tips is training in alcohol preventive services or something? Yeah, it's not how to get money from the patrons. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schlickman? Paul Schlickman, Precinct 9. I think we have 100 seats in here. <laughs> nope, we have 260 something. So we meet that category. The next question is, are we engaged in either dramatic or comedic performances? <laughs> comedic right now. <laughs> uh, this is a good thing for the town. Uh, we also have the Regent Theater in, in Arlington Center, which does a lot of live performances. This would be an asset to the theaters in the town. Uh, and we are not making the final decision. The voters would be by ballot in the town election. I think we should give the voters this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cacavaro. Mike, here we go. Thomas Cacavaro, Precinct 11. I just have one concern, because I'm always concerned about the underage drinking that goes on. Maybe the owner can answer this. How would he control that? You're in a theater, it's dark, Some, somebody over 21 buys a drink, goes back to the seat, you can't see, hands it to the, to the underage drinking. How would that be, uh, how would you police that? Mr. Freeman, can you answer that question for the gentleman? Um. Where's the person at? Uh, straight back. Oh, so I can answer it. Uh, that, that's a good question, and uh, we have that same situation at the Somerville Theater. 
Um, we do have ushers that poke their heads in, but we have not had one incident of that happening. And it's more of a situation where um, movies that are for adults, children are not present. So there really isn't uh, uh, an occasion for uh, an irresponsible parent or adult to slip his kid a beer or wine. Uh, and as I, as was mentioned, uh, the carding system is, is, is very effective. Nobody, nobody gets anything without, including you, sir, you would be carded <laughs> as well if you, uh, everybody gets carded. We don't go by, oh, well, this person looks of age. It's just a, a, a blanket policy that everybody gets checked. It's, it's, it's not a question about the carding system. I know it very well. You, you serve to over 21, you card them. They do bring the drinks back to under 21. It happens everywhere. My concern is it's dark. I do not know how you can police that. I think that's something we need to think about. It's difficult as it is now in this town. We don't have the resources or the manpower to keep up with what's going on with all these liquor licenses that we're giving out. I know the owners are trying their best to police it, but we have a dark theater now. I think we really need to think about this. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Fiore? Elsie Fiore, Precinct 2. I may be the only person who, for 50 years now, has been uh, voting against liquor. I don't drink myself. That is not why I vote against it. I just simply think we don't need it. And it just seems to me that it was a few years ago when seven people got set up in small restaurants and they got beer and wine. And then slowly it crept to them getting liquor and it just keeps escalating. And now we're going to have it in the theater. I don't go to the theater either. I'd rather come here and enjoy town meeting and politics and things like that. So I'm concerned also about children. And you mentioned some about, I don't see, and I drive around a lot, I don't see as many children wandering around in Somerville in the center as I do in Arlington. And I see lots of people that have to take the children with them to the theater in the evening. I just think it's something that I would prefer the town not have. We have um, beer and wine and we'll soon have liquor on every corner. And uh, I just think we're going the wrong way. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gromley. Maureen Gormley, Precinct 20. I rise with two hats tonight. One is a precinct and a, a town meeting member, but also as a member of the Arlington Chamber of Commerce, I'm on the executive committee. We sat down at our recent board meeting and we discussed these questions, this one and the next one, and we feel that it's a positive uh, thing to be able to put it before the voters, let the voters decide if this is what they want. It's another way for businesses to become unique and keep Arlington a very unique community. Uh, we have a lot of people that come to our community that are looking for entertainment and for a nice relaxing evening. If they choose to bring their kids along, they're probably not going to buy a beer or wine. If they're going out on a date, maybe they might. It, let the people decide what they want to do. And, and that's what I'm standing for is please um, vote for this and allow the people to decide if they want to have this at our next time that it's put on the ballot. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Leonard? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Leonard, Precinct 17. I rise against this. Uh, I'm reminded of the few times that I've gone into downtown Boston, whether it's been the Wilbur Theater or other theaters. They have presentations, live presentations down there. And for the most part, when they have breaks or whatever, you, are, you go out into the lobby and you have your alcohol there, and then you return back to your seat. Now, occasionally some people may sneak a drink back to their seat, but for the most part, 
for the money they've spent. They just basically want to come and enjoy, and it doesn't mean such a big thing to them to bring the drinks back to the seat. I'm also thinking about the fact that if I spent good money to go see a movie in some of these theaters, would I be within rights to be annoyed if people in front of me constantly were getting up and running back and forth and buying beer to bring back to the seat? What am I there to watch the movie for? I'll constantly interrupt it. So again, I rise against this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Marquis? No, wait for the microphone. Ken Marquis, Precinct 9. I don't think th theaters should be made guilty for the misuse of alcohol by people who are not old enough to be drinking alcohol. That kind of stuff happens all over the planet. So I don't think theaters should have to pay the price of having a more restrict environment within this town because they are pay, sort of paying the price for crime that occurs with the use of alcohol. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kleiman? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Stuart Kleiman, Precinct 1. Um, I think this is a very good thing. The thing about carding, I must say that um, I wish I was carded. I haven't carded in years. I would like the compliments. <laughs> um, but this is very, very good. Um, I have actually have been to the Somerville Theater, and I have seen this in action, and I've never seen a problem. It's actually very, very, very lovely. I also think that one thing that we need to do is support our independent theaters. We have too many chains around, and this is an independent theater, which I want to see, I want to see um, in operation for many, many years. So I would suggest a positive vote. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cook? Grant Cook, Precinct 6. Um, I rise in support of this. I mean, we can talk about all these hypotheticals with this Mission Impossible scheme to get a beer back into the theater, but frankly, if you have somebody who's willing to buy beer for you who's over 21, you're not going to be doing it in the Capitol. You're going to go down to the package store in Lexington and pick up a case. And, and I think we, we talked about the tips course, but I don't think you understand what that means. I mean, you go into... I guess the owner can comment, but I don't think you can walk up to the bar, the, the stack, stand and go, give me some juji fruits, and I want six Budweiser tall necks. You, you can maybe buy one or two beers at a time. The, the people back there are trained to spot if you're sloshed. I mean, they can refuse you. That's, that's part of what they go to training for. So to say that somehow we're going to open the door up to, to massive underage drinking while they watch, you know, the new Pixar flick, is, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's a really likely happening. <laughs> So, you know, I'd encourage this, I mean, you know, to, to, to have someone to go and have a, you know, in the end, overall, the theater owner is responsible for making sure that his patrons have a positive experience. So if people are raising a ruckus in there, I suspect they'll be asked to leave. And if it continually happens, I suspect they won't be welcomed back in. And it's his, it's his best interest to make this work, and it's, it's really our best interest to put it to the voters. I mean, this is really, it comes down to letting them decide. So thank you. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Weaver? Janice Weaver, Precinct 21. Um, I rise in objection to this, um, this article. Uh, I, like Elsie, have not voted for any um, liquor articles probably for 40 years. And the thing is, I love the Capitol Theater, and that's what I like about it, that it is a family theater. I don't think it's necessary to go to a movie that doesn't even last more than two hours, and you have to have a drink in between. I think that's ridiculous, and, and light of, in light of the fact that so many um, people have been hurt by alcohol in this town and other towns also, I feel as though you're just pushing more and more liquor, and I, I just object to this whole thing. Um, and I will still go to the Capitol Theater because it's a wonderful place to go, but it's a family place, and that's what makes this town unique, not having liquor, but not having it when we don't need it. Thank you. Um, Mr. Good? Uh, David Good, uh, town meeting member from Precinct 13. Um, some, I have a question for, for Mr. Freeman, but, but a statement also. Um, I, I have recollection uh, friends of mine in my youth would, would bring their own beer to the theater. So if, if, if people are going to bring it, they're going to bring it. 
and, and, and I think that uh, having it uh, uh, ID'd and, and have somebody validate that you are of age is, 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 is of huge value. Uh, you can do almost anything in the DAC. And, 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 so, 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 and, and I, think, I, think, I think kids are real good at that, but I, I do think that uh, uh, you can only control so much. Uh, my question for Mr. Freeman, some 25 years ago, um, I, I lived above the Capitol Theater, and uh, there was a 90-year-old uh, fellow who took tickets uh, at, at, the, at the front door, and uh, he used to let me come in and buy popcorn when I was sort of broke and uh, run back upstairs and watch TV instead of having to pay to go to the theater. But he did show me a, uh, an area before the theater was renovated that had a, an enormous chandelier in the ceiling, uh, a very large bar, and uh, a whole lot of bar stools, uh, cabinets for liquor. So my question for Mr. Freeman is, uh, is, is, was the Capitol Theater already uh, a, a facility that uh, held functions that served liquor and, and had some type of a bar function there? Kind of lost the scope, but it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if the Capitol was a speakeasy during Prohibition, uh, that was before my time, so I cannot tell it. <laughs> but but be, uh, during our tenure there, since the late 70s, I am unaware of this um, very interesting arrangement. <laughs> there, are, there are some hidden treasures in the, in the, in the Capitol that, that are buried behind walls, um, including a, an old pipe organ when the Capitol was once a... Uh, um, had uh, live stage presentations, but I am unaware of this um, meeting place that you're referring to. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McCory? Um, I think it's, well, I guess I, I grew up in a, in a bar, my, my parents owned a bar, they still do, uh, worked behind a bar for many years. So I, I've seen both sides, I've seen people who drink too much, and I've seen people who can drink moderately. That happens in Ireland, it happens here, that, that's a human nature problem. Um, I think uh, we're forgetting, about, so there are concerns there. Uh, but I would point back to the article, this, uh, a few people have mentioned liquor. I think this is for beer and wine, and it's not for liquor, is my understanding. Uh, secondly, I, I guess I would say, you know, we've expand, since I moved here in 2004, uh, we've expanded the licenses, the, uh, the selling of uh, beer and wine in Arlington. And I, from my knowledge, my limited knowledge, I, I hope it's... It's, it's, it still seems to be a good place to live. For some people, may, that may not be the case, and I respect that maybe there's too much uh, liquor. Uh, but I think we should think about most of the average residents, the, the, guy, the, the people who do shovel their, their driveway with snow, people who do like to go to the Capitol Theatre, even if they are not selling beer. I've been to both theatres, both the Somerville and the, Cap, and the uh, Capitol. Both, I'm not going there for a beer. I have a fridge, and, you know, there's, there's usually one or two beers in the fridge. Although I, I have to say it, I've just come off uh, Lent and I have six weeks of uh, that's, uh, something I, I like to do. <laughs> so, but getting back, I'm actually serious. Uh, with regards to the concerns of uh, the people who are against it, I would urge you to have faith in the residents of Arlington that uh, moderate, most people are moderate and uh, support the two theatres. Uh, Let's not uh, have to drive to Burlington to see a movie. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Klein? Hi, Christian Klein, Precinct 10. Um, it's my understanding that the Board of Selectmen have been asked in the past to provide temporary alcohol licenses at theaters, is that correct? Yes. Um, Ms. Rowe? Yes, we're asked for one-day liquor licenses. Many 
um, places do that as a fundraising venture. And have there ever been any problems associated with any of those events that you're aware of? None that I'm aware of, um, Chief. Any you're aware of? Not recently. Thank you. So it's, it's my understanding that um, there have been a number of events at these theaters that have included beer and wine in the past um, without incident. And for that reason, I stand in favor of this. Thank you. Thank you. It's Mr. Lewitton. Marvin Lewitton, Precinct 16. Uh, I think that most of us are elected to represent our precincts and the people who vote for us expect us to use our judgment in voting on bylaws and all kinds of other things. Uh, I frankly think that people in my precinct would be disappointed if I voted in a way that didn't give them an opportunity to vote on this. This Warren article is about authorizing a ballot question and whatever we may think uh, I think it's incumbent upon us to let our fellow residents have an opportunity to, you know, say their piece about it. Very good. Um, Mr. Smith. Scott Smith, Precinct 5, move the question in all matters. <laughs> okay. Motion to terminate debate has been seconded. All in favor of, second, of terminating debate, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. Debate is terminated. We have before us a home rule petition of the Board of Selectmen as printed in their report. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. All opposed, say no. No. Okay, because it's home rule legislation, um, we're going to have a standing vote because the legislature likes to see if we're really in favor of this or not. So we'll have the same tellers. All in favor, please rise. Twelve. All righty. Mr. Schlickman? Twenty-four on the left. Mr. O'Connor? Thirty-four on the left center. Mr. Trembley? Thirty-one right center. Mr. Horowitz? Thirty-two on the right. All opposed, please rise. Zero up front. Mr. Schlickman? Five. Five. Connor? One. One. Mr. Tremblay? Seven. Seven. Mr. Horowitz? Three. Three. It's a passage vote of 133 to 16. That brings us to Article 29, another home rule legislation. Two additional package stores. Um, again, this is to put it on the ballot. Ms. Rowe? No? Anyone? You're correct, Mr. Moderator. Um, as you know that the Board of Selectmen has been inching along in their approval of liquor licenses in different places. Um, we made a commitment to the three we, by beer and wine um, existing stores that we would give them the three licenses um, for all alcohol once the public had voted on it. Um, it's the selectmen's feeling that um, there is still a part of Arlington with no potential um, all liquor store and that's the Heights. So we are putting this Warren article in front of you to um, ask the town um, 
voters to vote yes or no for two additional all alcohol stores. We have had a non-binding vote on this, um, but we haven't had a binding vote. So that's what's before you. Um, and again, to try to, we have, the Board of Health um, spends a lot of time actually checking on and um, going into um, all the existing stores to make sure that they are not selling to underage minors. We have um, almost a perfect, we have a perfect record in Arlington of the existing um, stores. And so I want to say that we may be going down the path to damnation, but we're doing it very carefully and, <laughs> and we're, we have a wonderful board of health who have really, really been working with the police to ensure that, the, um, that we're really watching what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Fiore? Elsie Fiore, Precinct 2. And like I said earlier, I don't want to break my record of always opposing uh, alcohol. Uh, a few uh, weeks ago in uh, the newspaper, all of the restaurants that served food, I don't know about all of them, but a lot of them, listed their menus. And the new one on the corner of Lake Street, which apparently is a nice place and people um, go in and out and all, they listed their food and then at the top they had put in beer and wine coming soon. They hadn't even asked for it. And they put that in the paper. And I thought that was a little audacious of them to do that. But I'm going to have to uh, now say that because we don't really, we're not getting rich from all of these licenses we're giving out. Uh, we're told all the time, well, we have to do these things because we have to attract good businesses and uh, we're going to get money and all. But we don't get any money. My understanding, and maybe I'm wrong and maybe I'll be corrected, is that all that we get is the money for the liquor licenses. All the tax money we get out of restaurants and things is for the property that the tax and restaurant is contained in, whatever the address is. So uh, unless they can tell me that we don't need an override because we're going to make lots of money now when we get these two additional liquor licenses, I will still vote no. Okay. Thank I'm going to have uh, Ms. Rowe address how much money we do or don't get. The Board of Selectmen on Monday voted to set the all alcohol license at 3,500 um, a year per license. Um, with this was done at the recommendation of the Selectmen's Office who looked at the um, surrounding towns and we put ourselves right in the middle um, as we do with all of the fees that we, we charge. We look at um, what the poorer and richer communities around us um, do. The other thing is we do get a portion of the beer and wine, I mean the food and, and wine, is it? meals tax, thank you, um, is coming back to the, um, the town for your information. Ms. Scromley? Maureen Gormley, Precinct 20. Again, I'm rising in support of this article. Again, I would like the voters to make the decision on this. Um, the Arlington Chamber of Commerce is pro-business. We would like to be able to see and attract more businesses to town. Um, this. Uh, would give opportunity, as somebody said, that the Heights might be able to secure something. Yes, we do have Bermans just over the, the line in Lexington to, to help with the people uh, in the Heights area. But again, we're just trying to create a, a fair uh, opportunity, and that's all it is. It's an opportunity for somebody, another business, to try to do this. There are hurdles that they have to overcome in order to do this, but the first one is uh, let, their, let the voters decide if they want that to happen. Once that's done, then there'll be the discussion as to what needs to go on with that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hainer? 
Mr. Schrickman. Paul Schluckman, Precinct 9. Last year I stood before you urging you to vote down a similar article because we had a ballot question pending in the November election and I wanted to be informed of the uh, sentiment of the town for all alcohol on your existing three licenses before you went and expanded it. Well, the vote came in, it was 12,094 yes to 6,439 no, a two to one margin. Um, uh, the town clearly wants us to move in this direction. Whether they will vote similarly again to do that, I don't know. It's up to the voters to decide, but I think the voters have sent a very clear message to us that having alcohol available on retail within the confines of the town is something that they desire to have. Uh, going up to five licenses now seems to make sense. Um, we know the meat house is got a little sign on their uh, counter asking town meeting members to approve this article because their business model includes beer and wine in many of their stores and uh, they have told me that they would be asking for one of these licenses if we expand it. Uh, again, this is going before the voters. This is not a final decision and I think we respect our voters by placing it on the ballot. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Logan. William Logan, Precinct 2. Uh, first, I'm going to ask a question of the Board of Selectmen, but I want to disclose first that I have a client that is interested in this, so I'm disclosing that now, as I believe the rules indicate I have to as an attorney. Uh, the Board of Selectmen, did anyone officially say that they were interested in this? I'm not saying individually to the members, but did anyone like, write in support that they'd be interested in this? Yes, sir. To... Not that I know of. No. Okay, thank you, and I'm in support of this as I support any initiative that uh, allows the voters to directly decide their own future. Thank you. This gentleman right here next to Mr. Lewton, yep. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Eric Helm with Precinct 12. Um, Mr. Moderator, I have a question to the appropriate authority regarding uh, the excellent uh, compliance checks that I know that the Board of Health and the APD conduct um, to ensure that our liquor outlets do not um, inadvertently or otherwise uh, sell to underage uh, customers. And my question is, if we um, put this forward, and if the town were to put this forward, uh, would the town be able to maintain the same level of compliance checks for the existing outlets and these potential two outlets? Um, Ms. And this, is, this is a resources question, and I, I say this in, in light Chief, of our budget reality. Chief, Chief please is going to address that. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Frederick Ryan, Chief of Police. Certainly, uh, the fiscal 12 budget as it currently stands is a challenge and, and uh, these type of uh, operations are labor intensive and have to uh, adhere to guidelines prescribed by the uh, alcohol uh, ABCC, the Alcohol Control Commission, state agency, that lays out guidelines uh, as to how these um, operations uh, are to be conducted and they are labor intensive. So short answer is, uh, given the challenges of Fiscal 12, we will be do doing fewer compliance checks because we just don't have the resources. I think Ms. Um, Rowe also wants to address um, this. Yes, one of the reasons that we set the fee at $3,500 is hopefully to s help defray the cost somewhat of the Board of Health and, and the APD doing this kind of compliance checking. We think it's very important. Thank you. I'm glad I raised the question. Um, I'm not opposing the, uh, the motion. Uh, I live in the Heights, and I remember from last year that uh, my friend uh, Gordon mentioned that he just assumed not have to drive to Berman's for his booze, and I would feel the same way. But I think that, um, you know, it really is important that we remember that doing this is a convenience for the citizens. Um, it is of economic benefit to businesses in the town, but it does not come at no cost. There is always some level of additional risk uh, with moderate consumption of alcohol for most of us um, and with outlets uh, with respect to selling to underage uh, individuals. Um, we, we definitely don't want to do that. So I think 
I would be very happy, to, I'm happy to hear uh, Select Monroe's commitment to finding a way to maintain the same level of compliance checks and if this indeed moves forward, uh, I hope that we keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Marr. Uh, I'd just like to make a John Marr, Precinct 14. Uh, I think there's a surface attractiveness to the argument that let the voters decide. I just want to briefly mention that we decide that. Uh, to simply say that, well, let's just give it to the voters. No, there's a three-step process here. This town meeting must support going to the legislature. The legislature, in the second instance, then determines whether or not the law passes, and only then does it get to the voters. But to simply say, and I'm speaking not particularly on this item, but any ballot question, this town meeting has prerogatives. And I, think, I don't think we want to uh, lose sight of that, so to suggest that well, let the voters decide, I think, overlooks the fact that we have that prerogative in the first instance. Thank you. Um, this gentleman, straight back, yeah. Thank you. Neil Dorn, Precinct 15. <laughs> I came in front of this board last year and asked for time for our business to get going and really start working. You gave it to us. I'm in favor for this. The Alton Heights needs another store. Uh, the town really polices us. I know that more than anybody in this room. I see no issue with the Heights getting a store, and it doesn't affect my business. I'm not speaking for the other businesses, but I'm speaking for mine. Thank you. Can you say your name again? Neil Duggan. Oh, Neil Duggan, okay. Yeah. Okay, thanks. We didn't get it. Um, Mr. Smith, Dick Smith. Dick Smith, Precinct 17. It wasn't too many decades ago when people went out in Arlington, they could go to a pizza parlor, maybe a Chinese restaurant. There wasn't much else to go to. Gradually, Arlington started becoming a dynamic town as wine and beer was allowed to come in. New, exciting, and unique restaurants have been opening up and Arlington now is a place that people in other communities come to because of these uh, new features that Arlington has. It used to be so that Arlington people went somewhere else. They'd go to Boston, Cambridge, places like that. So all in all, Arlington has benefited greatly by easing up on the restrictions and allowing in more alcoholic beverages. However, we now have three units that sell uh, um, wine and beer. By having more units, we're not going to attract people from other communities to come into Arlington because uh, the other communities already have a place to go to. By having more, uh, an additional two, one or two outlets, that means the outlets that are here now are going to have to share the Arlington business with other, with the new shops. And there isn't that much, Arlington is a small town. It isn't going to attract much business from outside of Arlington. The argument that uh, there should be something in the Heights means that in instead of driving three minutes to a store, you have to drive five or six minutes to get to East Arlington. But I think by allowing more outlets in Arlington, we're hurting the outlets that are here. We're going to diminish the, their ability to uh, prosper and survive. And I think Arlington is, in this particular instance, we're making a big step backwards by not doing our best to support what we have now. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Butler. The gentleman right here in the black sweatshirt. Pass. Mr. Foskett. Charles Foskett, Precinct 8. Um, <clears throat> actually, my, my subject's very similar to what Dick Smith just brought up. My, my question for the Board of Selectmen is, uh, have they thought about how many 
uh, I mean, there's, there's two sides to this issue. One is the social impact and how we monitor this, these uh, 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 retail stores and, and how they sell and to whom they sell to. And the other side is how many, on the economic side, how many of these uh, retail liquor outlets can the town uh, or can be economically supported in the town? Because I remember years ago, uh, at least the rumor was that the neighboring towns, the, the, the liquor stores in the neighboring towns were sort of funding the opposition to having relaxed uh, rules in Arlington because it might affect their business. And I'm wondering if the Board of Selectmen have done any um, or given any thought to the economic impact of, of more uh, liquor stores and how many can the town support? Is it Ms. LaCourt who's Sir. Can we get an answer to his question and then adjourn? Okay. Um, Annie LaCourt, resident data geek. Um, we, we actually asked this question when the topic of whether or not to add licenses first came up and we looked at surrounding towns of similar density with a similar number of, of people living in them and discovered that most of the towns with about 40,000 people living in them have five or six liquor stores that they seem to be supporting. So our feeling is that the town can support via its own business um, five licenses, and that's why we asked for two additional ones. Thank you. Does that answer your question, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, we have a motion to, um, to adjourn on the table. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. <laughs> Let's try that again. All in favor of adjourning, please say yes. Yes! All opposed? The no's are yelling loud, but there are more yeses yelling. <laughs> All right, we're adjourned till Monday. Are there any motions for reconsideration? Motions for reconsideration on the articles we passed this evening. I see no reconsiderations. Okay.